Cryotherapy is a commonly used treatment in dermatology and primary care for various skin lesions. It freezes and destroys abnormal tissue, allowing the regrowth of non-diseased skin. In this video, I'm going to cover all you need to know about cryotherapy. The word cryotherapy comes from the Greek word cryos, meaning cold or frost, and therapia means healing or cure. So essentially it translates to cold therapy or cold treatment. There are multiple different freezing agents. I use three different forms of cryotherapy currently in my practice. Firstly, liquid nitrogen. It's extremely cold, having a boiling point of minus 196 degrees C. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to obtain and store, which can limit its usefulness in practice. I also use freeze pan, which is filled with easily storable canisters. It emits a fine jet of nitrous oxide at minus 89 degrees C, and it allows millimeter precision. I like it for small lesions around the eyes. Finally, I also use hydrazid, which is a very high-tech nozzle used to deliver norfluorine. The melting point of norfluorine is minus 103 degrees C. This cold blast destroys the affected tissue by freezing the intracellular fluid, forming ice shards and crystals, and this ruptures the cell membrane, destroying the cell. Benign skin lesions like warts or skin tags, molluscum contagiosum and seborrheic keratosis are commonly treated with cryotherapy. Another common application is to treat areas of sun damage known as actinic or solar keratosis. And occasionally it's used to treat superficial BCCs, either alone or in combination with creams. And I mentioned lots of these in the video in the card above. The British Association of Dermatologists have made a great patient information leaflet on cryotherapy, and I'll link to that in the description below. In it, they explain how the procedure is formed using liquid nitrogen. We don't usually use local anesthetics, as they're just as painful to put in, because you need to put an injection into the skin, and they can be just as sore as the cryotherapy itself. Speaking of pain, cryotherapy is tolerated very well by the vast majority of people. I usually describe to my patients how they should expect to feel a cold burn. If treating the face, they will also notice the breeze-like effect of the expulsion of the freezing gas as it leaves the nozzle and hits the skin. The frozen skin goes white, then thaws, and the usual treatment is repeated a couple of times depending on the thickness of the lesion and the type of the lesion. And that's where a bit of experience from your healthcare provider comes into play. Different lesions will require different amounts. I advise my patients that the burning sensation can last around 15 minutes, and you may even get a blister starting almost immediately. This will heal over with a scab and can take a couple of weeks to fall off, depending on the person and their skin type. Lower legs will take longer to heal, so we're trying to avoid cryotherapy on the shins. I recommend my patients to apply Vaseline daily to the areas to help the healing process. It also helps reduce the itch and crusting, because there's a temptation to pick off any scabs, and which, although tempting, that delays the healing and increases the risk of infection in the skin. So apart from the immediate pain, swelling, redness, potential blistering and infection, what other side effects will there be? Well, thankfully, not much. Occasionally, after the cryotherapy, the skin can become lighter in pigment or even hyperpigmented. Occasionally, a very superficial nerve may become frozen, and this can lead to abnormal sensation, which can last a few months. Another side effect is that the lesion hasn't fully resolved and further treatment is required. This is usually fairly predictable for things like hand warts or large, thick seborrheic keratosis. I recommend you watch this video here, which describes another lesion which cryotherapy is really useful for.